Hello, I'm Ali. I'm here with Peter. We're in Dublin, Ireland. It's a beautiful day. The sun is shining, the birds are singing, and on this Hilton Garden Inn, there is a Vodafone site that is giving us very good 5G performance. We were seeing on band N78 about one gigabit a second. Really impressive performance as we were crossing the bridge. It's a beautiful day to be in Dublin. And I've actually got much better numbers off um, EE roaming here using that site hitting very close to the two gigabit per second mark as well, which is just absolutely astonishing for N78, 100 megahertz, running alongside 4G. So this is a Google Pixel 5 with a Vodafone Island prepay SIM now that they offer 5G on pay as you go. Let's just see what kind of 5G performance we get off this site. Latency 15 milliseconds, very reasonable there and throughput wise it generally starts around the 800 900s before settling somewhere close to about a thousand megabits per second which is very very reasonable in addition uploads are actually really nice as well again sitting about 130 but you can get upwards to sort of 140 as well so one interesting thing that we have observed is that the speeds peter's got before when roaming we're actually higher than the speeds we're receiving today with a native Vodafone IE SIM. So quite a while ago now, actually like a few months ago, I was in Dublin and after a lot of fighting, I managed to get 5G roaming working on one of my handsets. And it turned out that EE 5G roaming actually worked, um, which was surprising because it wasn't publicized or anything that EE supported 5G roaming at that point. And not only was it working, but I was actually getting upwards of 1.7 gigabit per second 5G off this site, which is absolutely astounding, not just for the 5G point of view, but also roaming as well. However, important to know about that and in relation to speeds today, that was quite late at night and the place was completely devoid of people. Whereas now it's quite a busy Saturday afternoon so from like a traffic point of view, there are like extenuating factors that could be impacting things here, in addition to obviously the different handsets as well. And with Android, the carrier policy can be an issue as well in terms of what you can connect to, even if your operator does support it. Yeah, carrier policies and arbitrary restrictions are a massive hindrance and often leave me looking like a hacker in the street. In addition to the dedicated N78 spectrum that Vodafone Ireland has deployed on some sites, that, like the one we saw along the river, they also have sites where they're using dynamic spectrum sharing with their band 1 spectrum to provide both NR and 4G in the same spectrum. There's an example of this in use behind us. So Vodafone operate 2 by 10 megahertz on sites like this with dynamic spectrum sharing on 2100 megahertz. This means that the 2 by 10 megahertz is broadcasting both LTE and NR simultaneously through some very clever processing by the baseband essentially at the site. However, it fundamentally is 2 by 10 megahertz of spectrum regardless of whether it's LTE, NR or both and therefore in this situation where we're using this NR bearer, it doesn't really contribute all that much and the total throughput still ends up looking very much like 4G albeit with a 5G symbol showing. So, you've seen how the networks perform under ideal conditions. We were in a less congested area generally when we were down the river. We have came up the river some. We're now around downtown Dublin and the Temple Bar, the main touristy area, is behind us here. There's a nice tower, the Rainbow Bridge is down that way. So in central Dublin itself, especially around some of the touristy retail places we've been, there isn't that much N78 site density. There are not that many sites with N78 broadcasting and that does affect performance quite a lot. Secondarily, central Dublin is covered in Vodafone microcells, which is absolutely great for 4G capacity. However, the network is not set up in a way that these can be used as 4G anchor in an inter-site configuration. And therefore, when you are 4G connected to these microcells, you do not have access to 5G. So through much of central Dublin, you therefore 
do not see 5G at all, unless you start disabling bands, in which case you sometimes can see a little bit more. But for your average user, it greatly limits the 5G availability and also the overall performance achievable because the dedicated N78 spectrum really does provide a large boost, even in relatively poor conditions, when you are actually able to use it. Outside of central Dublin, the N78 bandwidth situation varies because Vodafone does not have the ability to broadcast 100 megahertz in all areas due to their Conreg licenses. Additionally, many areas outside of top tier cities do not have N78 instead using the N1 DSS to provide the 5G as well. So in summary, we've had a really nice day out here in Dublin. Vodafone IE is quite good for performance. On a good conditions, we've seen 200 megabits on LT in excess of a gigabit on NR. It's been a fantastic time. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, it's been great and I hope to see you on the next video.